Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar called Discovery and Verification of EQTLs Associated with Lung Adenocarcinoma. My name is Jeffrey Cassell, and I'm a Senior Market Development Manager in the Genetic Sciences Division at Thermo Fisher Scientific. I'll be your, moder uh, your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar is presented by LabRoots and brought to you by Thermo Fisher Scientific, a world leader in serving science. Our mission is to enable our customers to make the world healthier, cleaner, and safer. To learn more, please visit www.thermofisher.com. Okay, so let's get started. But before we begin, I would like to remind everyone that this event is interactive. We encourage you to participate by submitting as many questions as you want and at any time you want during the presentation. To do so, simply type them into the Ask a Question box and click Send. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. If you have any trouble seeing or hearing the presentation, click on the Support tab found at the top right of the presentation window or report your problem by clicking on the Ask a Question box located to the far left of your screen. Today's presentation is educational and thus offers continuing education credits. Please click on the Continuing Education Credits tab located at the top right of your presentation window and follow the process to obtain your credits. So now I want to present today's speakers. Tommaso Dragani, who is the former director of the research unit Genetic Epidemiology and Pharmacogenomics at the National Institute at the National Tumor Institute of Milan and Dr. Harita Berschlingham, Senior Product Application Scientist at Thermo Fisher Scientific. For complete biographies on the speakers, please visit the Biography tab at the top right of your screen. So, Dr. Dragani, you may now begin your presentation. Hello, I'm Tommaso Dragani, and uh, uh, I will talk uh, about the collaboration that we have carried out uh, with the Remo Fisher Scientific on the discovery and the verification of uh, expression quantitative trait loci in lung tissue of uh, lung adenocarcinoma patients. In uh, uh, slide two, um, it uh, summarizes uh, the uh, aim of uh, this study. So the aim was uh, to identify the EQTRs, uh, uh, and in particular, uh, EQTRs acting in sheath uh, and uh, EQTRs acting in trans. So the cheese acting EQTRs are uh, EQTRs affecting the expression of nearby genes, whereas trans EQTRs are the EQTRs affecting the expression of uh, uh, distant uh, uh, target genes. Well, what about the importance uh, of uh, the uh, analysis of EQTLs in lung adenocarcinoma? And uh, how we have screened and discovered the, the EQTLs uh, and how we have verified the uh, EQTLs uh, by an independent study. And, uh, um, also, we will uh, show you the solutions that are offered by Thermo Fisher Scientific. And at the end, uh, um, there are the questions and answers. Uh, on, on slide uh, four, uh, it's briefly uh, summarized how uh, we have carried out uh, this study. So we have uh, measured the, the expression levels of, the, of all known genes. So we have uh, carried out all transcriptome analysis, and these uh, are the phenotypes of our studies. Then we have also carried out uh, um, genome-wide genotyping. And then uh, we have uh, put together the uh, phenotype with uh, the genotype. In other words, uh, we have carried out a statistical analysis of the association's uh, genotype uh, phenotype. This is, uh, this is for each SNP and uh, for each uh, target gene. 
So uh, it was uh, a matrix uh, analysis. And uh, in this analysis, uh, we have uh, also used uh, covariates that uh, may affect the uh, transcription levels of genes, so uh, such sex, age, uh, smoking habits. Mm. On uh, slide five, you can see mm, how uh, EQTS uh, uh, works. So in uh, what type conditions, uh, the transcription factors um, bind to uh, some gene regions and modulate the expression of uh, uh, target genes. So they may uh, act uh, in... Uh, on different genes in the whole genome or may uh, act on a single gene. So it depends uh, on uh, the, uh, the type of transcription factors. Um, in slide six, uh, it's shown that we can have uh, uh, the uh, so-called cheese EQTL, so the uh, EQTLs acting in cheese, so affecting the expression levels uh, of uh, associated genes of, of a, near, a nearby gene. Uh, so these uh, EQTS are uh, EQTS located uh, um, usually in the, the promoter region or a um, region close to the promoter region of a given gene. And uh, in this way, uh, polymorphism may modulate the affinity of uh, the transcription factor uh, with uh, um, that uh, target DNA region modulating the gene expressions. <laughs> In this case, uh, may uh, alter the expression of uh, the target gene. In uh, slide set seven, we can uh, see uh, what are the trans EQTL. So these are uh, um, genetic polymorphisms affecting the expression of uh, target genes uh, located on uh, different chromosomes uh, or uh, um, in a distant region of uh, the same chromosome. In this case, uh, we have the genetic variation not uh, in the promoter region of a given gene, but uh, we have uh, uh, genetic polymorphisms in, uh, the, uh, trans in the transcriptor factor, the gene uh, um, <coughs> coding for the transcriptor factor. In the, this way, uh, we can have uh, um, transcriptor factors with uh, um, difference in the protein structure, and so the, uh, the different types of uh, transcription factors, depending on the SNPs, they may have a different affinity for uh, their binding region, and in this way can affect the uh, expression of uh, target gene or target genes that may be located uh, on uh, different uh, chromosomes. So it may be that trans EQTS may affect the expression of multiple genes if uh, the transcription factors is uh, a transcription factor modulating uh, multiple uh, genes. On uh, slide eight, uh, we have uh, a picture taken from the um, work of McKay uh, et al. on natural genetics and that uh, was published in uh, 2017. This is uh, a huge work uh, that has been uh, carried uh, out by um, a consortium uh, working on the genetics of lung cancer. And uh, as you can see, uh, there are uh, um, many loci affecting the risk of lung cancer. So the lung cancer, not considering the different uh, histotypes, there are uh, at least 18 uh, loci statistically significant, uh, genome-wide. And for uh, lung adenocarcinoma, there are uh, eight loci. 
uh, in most of these cases, uh, um, the function of this uh, uh, loci is not uh, known. Uh, in other words, the mechanism how this uh, uh, genetic polymorphisms uh, located in the junk DNA affect the individual risk of uh, lung cancer is not known. So the uh, EQDL analysis may represent a way uh, to uh, identify possible uh, uh, mode of actions of uh, the loci affecting the uh, risk of disease. And uh, also not only risk of disease, we can also study uh, loci affecting uh, the outcome of uh, the disease. Indeed, uh, we are looking at uh, loci affecting the overall survival of uh, lung and lung carcinoma patients. Uh, in uh, uh, slide nine, uh, there is a table that summarized uh, the, uh, our previous results on uh, analysis of uh, EQTLs in uh, um, loci already uh, mapped uh, for uh, association with the risk of uh, lung cancer. We found uh, um, a locus on chromosome 15 in the uh, nicotinic receptor uh, uh, locus. And in this locus, uh, we found several polymorphisms affecting the expression of uh, um, IL2 gene and uh, of PSMA4 gene. There are two genes located in the same locus. So these uh, are just um, acting uh, EQDS. And also we found uh, uh, another EQTL affecting the expression of uh, uh, ER621 uh, gene. It's on chromosome 19. So uh, in slide 10, um, to summarize what I was saying, so that uh, uh, many SNPs uh, are associated, uh, have been found associated with uh, um, risk of uh, a disease, in particular of lung cancer, and but also with uh, other cancers and also with other diseases. And uh, uh, at the moment, uh, we do not know the mechanism underlying this, uh, this association. So, uh, they uh, need uh, a, a functional uh, characterization. And uh, indeed, uh, uh, results uh, from genome wide association studies uh, uh, estimate that 90% of all, of all uh, uh, SNPs uh, match to uh, long coding regions. So, um, to regions that uh, may uh, act by regulating uh, the expression of a uh, uh, target gene. So, the um, modulation of uh, expression of target genes may represent an uh, important mechanism underlying uh, the uh, individual difference in the risk of disease. And uh, so they are what of deep uh, studies. And for these reasons, uh, EQTS has become important uh, in understanding uh, the molecular mechanism of diseases. And uh, in this pre preliminary study, we carried out the uh, analysis of the whole genome to assess uh, SNP function as EQTL in the uh, lung tissue of series of uh, 93 Italian lung adenocarcinoma uh, patients surgically treated uh, in uh, the uh, hospital uh, collaborating to our study. The, all these hospitals are, uh, and research institutes are located in the uh, Milan area. On, on slide 11, uh, um, it's to summarize the, uh, the workflow of, of the study. On the uh, top line, uh, you can see uh, how we have carried out uh, the analysis of uh, uh, genetic polymorphisms uh, on the whole genome. 
Well, so on the bottom line, uh, you can see how we have uh, carried out uh, the analysis of uh, transcript tome. And then uh, uh, you can see how we have uh, uh, matched the uh, results of both uh, genotyping and uh, uh, transcriptome analysis uh, to uh, identify uh, the EQTLs. And then uh, we have uh, um, carried out the uh, technical validation of uh, the EQTL using uh, a different uh, technical approach. On uh, slide 12, uh, um, the, there is the description of uh, the samples that uh, we have used. Uh, there are 93 uh, lung adenocarcinoma patients uh, surgically treated, and uh, they are uh, um, typical patients. Uh, the, the, their characteristics are typical of uh, this type of patients, so they are quite old. The uh, median age is uh, 70 uh, year old. And um, in this case, uh, we have uh, quite a good, uh, quite the same distribution between uh, females and males. And uh, also we have uh, patients uh, with a different uh, uh, pathological stage and uh, different uh, uh, smoking habits. On uh, slide 13, uh, um, the, you can see uh, there is uh, uh, a whole uh, um, picture of uh, uh, the uh, transcriptome results. In uh, uh, these cases, uh, um, there are uh, um, we have selected uh, uh, only the uh, 1,000 genes uh, where we have seen uh, the uh, most uh, variation in gene expression. So these are the most informative genes, and uh, uh, we. Uh, we can see each column is a single patient. So uh, you can see that, that, that there is a, some uh, difference among uh, groups of patients. And uh, overall, uh, there is a typical pattern of uh, such kind of, of study. Uh, here is uh, uh, an example of uh, uh, genotyping of the SNP. As you can see, uh, there are different uh, genotypes. We have uh, the uh, individual homozygous for a uh, given allele, homozygous for the other allele, and uh, uh, in the middle, uh, we have uh, uh, heterozygous patients uh, carrying uh, uh, both alleles. And uh, on uh, slide 15, uh, we have um, reported a series of clips uh, uh, associated um, with uh, the, the modulation of expression level of uh, the target genes. For the uh, statistical analysis, uh, we have used the genotype as uh, uh, an integral number. It, uh, it means that we have used the zero, one, or two uh, codes for genotype depending on the number of the minor allele uh, for uh, each SNP. And uh, uh, for the statistical analysis, we have also uh, adjusted for uh, multiple uh, testing. And so we have derived the uh, FDR values that uh, indicate if the association was uh, statistically significant or not after correction for uh, multiple comparison. And uh, uh, on slide uh, 16, uh, 16, you can see a, a circle plot uh, um, uh, for, uh, as an example 
of uh, the EQTS that we have identified in the present study. Uh, when uh, you see a, a, a line on uh, the same chromosome, it means that the EQTS, the, the EQTS that was mapped in that region is a cis-acting EQTL, so it acts on the same chromosome. Whereas when um, you see a, 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 a circular going from one chromosome to another one, this uh, indicates a, a trans-acting EQTL. Uh, you can see that uh, there are a few trans-acting EQTL uh, mapping uh, the expression uh, of uh, genes located uh, uh, in other chromosomes, and most of the uh, SNPs uh, were uh, cis-acting uh, EQTLs. Then uh, on uh, slide 17, uh, you can uh, have also uh, an example of uh, the, the expression level of biogenotype uh, of uh, genes that uh, we have uh, identified in the present studies and that are target of uh, in regions. So um, most of the cases uh, we have uh, quite uh, a dose response relationship between the genotype and the phenotype. In other words, uh, by increasing the number of uh, the minor allele, we have uh, an increase uh, on the expression level of a given gene or uh, a decrease, uh, it depends on the type of association that uh, we have uh, uh, identified. So uh, then we can go uh, on slide 18, and maybe Arita can talk about uh, on the uh, verification of microarray data using uh, uh, quantitative uh, PCR. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Jogani, for that really nice introduction and uh, status of the project till um, screening and discovery. Um, so as Dr. Jogani uh, mentioned, the next stage of um, the project was to verify data um, from uh, microarrays and EQTL analysis using um, qPCR. For this, we uh, chose to use the TACMAN assays. Um, so TACMAN SNP assays were used to verify genotyping, genotyping um, results from the Axiom um, arrays. And these were a natural choice for confirmation because, um, you know, the um, uh, pro IDs on Axiom arrays are already mapped to TACMAN genotyping assays uh, using the RSID um, links. So post EQTL analysis, SNPs of interest from Axiom arrays can be identified by verification studies. And um, since pro IDs, as I said, were already mapped to TACMAN assays, a simple click of button on the Axiom analysis suite takes you to the TACMAN um, SNP assays um, on the uh, TAC, uh, uh, Thermo Fisher uh, search portal, and these can be automatically um, added to cart and ordered. Um, and the image on the slide shows you exactly how that's done. So on the left panel, you see a screenshot of um, the Axiom analysis suite with um, probe IDs uh, associated to RSIDs. These RSIDs, as I mentioned, are in turn linked to TACMAN SNP assays. Um, a cl click on the RSIDs will automatically take you to the uh, TACMAN SNP um, uh, ordering page. Um, similarly, the probe IDs and trans transcript cluster IDs on Clarion D, which is the gene expression array, are also mapped to TACMAN gene expression assays. Um, in this case, however, you would need to use the probe ID, um, at the actual ID, or the trans cluster ID as um, search uh, 
uh, search inputs and search uh, for tap mention expression assays in um, the Thermo Fisher TACMAN search portal. Once this is done, um, the portal uh, re uh, results in several different tap mention expression assays, which could then be ordered for verification studies. So that's a quick um, overview of how we chose the TACMAN assays. Uh, in the next few slides, I'm going to talk about some of the data that we um, obtained. So for um, the genotyping um, data, verification data, as I said, we used the TACMAN geno genotyping assays. These assays were run on um, applied biosystem VS7 real-time qPCR um, instrument. However, these assays could be run on any of the compatible um, qPCR instruments. And genotyping calls for this set of data were uh, made on Thermo Fisher Connect GT app. On the left, you see an example of the cluster plot showing allelic discrimination for SNP RS5582384. In the plot, each um, of the homozygous allele are represented by um, either a red dot, which is for GG in this example, um, or blue. Um, again, in this example, it's uh, for the homozygous AA allele, and the heterozygous alleles are in green. Samples that did not amplify are highlighted by yellow rings. Gene expression um, assays, uh, like genotyping assays, were run on um, applied biosystems VS7. Uh, real-time qPCR instrument and data was also analyzed on Thermo Fisher Connect, this time the RQ or Relative Quantification app. On the left, you see multi-component plots of amplification curves for gene XRRA1. Again, this is an example of how um, the amplification data looks with uh, TACMAN gene expression assays. Um, so for both uh, genotyping and gene expression assays, we found that the um, data from TACMAN assays had uh, very good concordance to uh, data on the expression and genotyping arrays. Once we had genotyping and gene expression assays results from them, we combined the data using JUMP software version uh, 13. As you can see in the graphs here, expression signals when categorized by genotype calls showed the same pattern as seen in microarrays for genes GBP3 and LRR LRRC3. On the left panel are, uh, is data from qPCR, and the, on, on the right, you see data from microarrays. The two platforms um, uh, result in images that look like mirror images because expression signal on microarray platforms are reported out as signal intensities, whereas signal um, from qPCRs are reported in the form of CQs, where expression signals are um, at, uh, a lower CQ corresponds to a higher expression value. So although the data is uh, very similar on the both on the two platforms, the images appear, or the plots appear as mirror images. And the other uh, set of data was um, for genes XRRA1 and RBM12. Again, we found that data between qPCR and microarray um, corresponded really well, uh, thereby confirming uh, microarray data by qPCR. So these were the four uh, EQTLs that we were able to confirm by qPCR. Although, although there were um, a few uh, others that were identified in our discovery um, with microarrays, because of the small sample size, we were not able to statistically confirm or have st statistically valid data to confirm with qPCR. Um, our thinking is that if we had a larger cohort of samples, we, were able, we would be able to confirm more of the EQTLs that were identified by microarray with qPCR. And uh, that is really the end of the data. I did want to take this time 
to quickly uh, go over um, uh, the workflow. So I'm going to jump back to slide 11 that was presented by Dr. Dragani um, to kind of bring everything uh, together with respect to the workflow. Um, once we had the samples, um, DNA and RNA was extracted from the same samples, and in parallel, DNA and RNA were processed on either um, the Axiom uh, PMRA arrays for genotyping or the Clarium D arrays for gene expression. As can be seen by the flowchart, uh, data from uh, 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 Axiom arrays, um, which is then processed on um, Axiom analysis suite, and data from Clarium D arrays, which is then processed on the TAC 4.0 software, uh, was used to um, feed into the EQTL analysis matrix um, EQTL R package, um, where, which helped in um, identifying putative EQTLs. These putative EQTLs were further confirmed by um, the applied biosystems TACMAN SNP genotyping assays and uh, TACMAN gene expression assays. So that was our entire workflow. I want to take um, another minute or so to just um, go into some of the details of um, the platforms. Uh, Thermo Fisher Scientific offers um, an uh, an, the entire solution for you, um, starting from microarrays, um, both gene expression and um, uh, genotyping arrays, which were used for screening and discovery in the study. Um, matrix uh, EQTLR package is a third-party software, which can be used for um, identifying EQTLs. And then we also offer TACMAN gene expression and uh, SNP assays, uh, which were in this study used for confirmational studies. With that, uh, this is the end of uh, my slides, and um, we'll open up um, for questions from you. Okay, um, thank you so much, Harita. Thank you so much, Tommaso. Uh, that was a really great uh, informative presentation. So now let's start with the live Q&A portion for this webinar. Um, if you have a question you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen, and we'll go ahead and answer as many of the questions as we have time for. And we actually do already have some questions, so um, I'll go ahead and um, uh, kick it off here with the first one. So uh, the first question is, why did you choose to use microarrays instead of next-gen sequencing for the gene expression profiling experiment? Um, so I can take that, um, Dr. Jogani, if you don't mind. Um, if I understand right, uh, uh, Dr. Ghani's lab had used um, NGS um, to profile the transcriptome in the past, um, and when they found out about um, the Clarium D arrays and that they offer complete transcriptome coverage, um, they chose to use that because um, you know it was uh, a good alternative to using the NGS. Yeah. Okay, great, great. Um, thank you so much for that, Harita. Um, I think maybe this next question is for Tommaso. Um, why was your study cohort only 93 samples? Is that not too small for an EQTL study? Well, uh, this uh, was a preliminary study, so we have uh, used the, the such number of samples, it, uh, since it was convenient that we can put all the samples in the same plate. Uh, and uh, in this way, we can uh, uh, um, analyze uh, both DNA and, and RNA uh, quite easily in the same samples. Uh, and it was also a time effective uh, uh, study. In this way, uh, we uh, received the results in a relatively short time, and um, but uh, the study it's relatively small, uh, uh, 
but it's uh, quite informative. As you have seen, uh, we uh, detected uh, many EQTLs, statistically significant uh, EQTL by uh, the genome-wide analysis. And uh, so, although uh, the study may, the size of the study may be increased, uh, it was uh, uh, sufficient uh, as a proof of concept uh, to show that uh, such approach uh, could be uh, cost effective and uh, time effective for uh, a rapid analysis of the uh, EQTRs in uh, uh, a tissue of uh, interest. Okay, thank you so much for that answer and that explanation. Um, let's see, we, we have another um, question in here. Um, are all of the significant EQTLs cis EQTLs, or did you also find any trans EQTLs in your study? Uh, we have detected uh, both uh, cis acting and the trans acting EQTLs. Uh, most of the EQTLs that we have detected uh, are uh, cis acting uh, EQTLs, but uh, uh, we uh, were able to detect uh, also uh, several uh, trans acting EQTLs uh, acting on uh, multiple uh, target genes uh, uh, located in different uh, chromosomes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dragani. It, it looks like the next question might also. Um, be for you. Uh, what was the minor allele cutoff used in your study and why? In this study, we uh, decided to use uh, a cutoff of 0.1, it means 10%, as uh, the frequency of the minor allele. And uh, the reason for such a choice uh, was that uh, the uh, now, the size of the studies uh, is uh, relatively small, so we had the 93 samples, and uh, uh, to get uh, some uh, um, significant association, and uh, we uh, would need that at least a small group of uh, patients uh, we carry the minor allele. Uh, uh, so in this way, uh, we, uh, we analyze the most uh, informative needs. And this is uh, why we have uh, chosen the point one as uh, a minor frequency. But uh, if uh, um, we, we, carry it out, we carry it out a larger study, I mean 1,000 samples, uh, we can use uh, uh, lower the top for the uh, minor people. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, it looks like the next question we have is for Harita. Um, so how many samples do you think need to be confirmed by real-time PCR? That's a good question. Um, so as, uh, as I had mentioned, um, you know, we uh, expect to at least um, verify a couple of hundred different samples um, to be able to confirm data. But just to add on to what Dr. Dragani said, this was a preliminary test. This was a preliminary study um, with limited number of samples. Um, so every sample that was test tested for microarray was also tested for qPCR. But in a larger uh, study, um, you know, there's thousands of samples are being tested on microarrays. Um, a couple of hundred, about two or three different uh, hundred uh, samples could be tested for qPCR verification. Okay, okay, thank you so much. Um, let's see, it looks like we, we've got a lot of questions here, but it looks like we have um, time to, to do one more. Um, and, and Harita, this is, uh, I think, a similar question, so maybe um, let's see if you can take this one. Um, why were you able to confirm only four EQTLs by real-time PCR? Um, so I, I think, you know, the, uh, this is adding on to what I just mentioned. Uh, it was definitely a small um, sample cohort that was used for this study um, because the purpose of the study was a prelim preliminary test. So um, we only had 93 test samples. Um, because of that, we 
were able to confirm only four. However, um, the trend of the data for uh, the rest of the uh, targets, uh, EGTL targets, was very similar to that we had seen in microarray, uh, but um, the qPCR data was not statistically significant to make calls one way or the other. So we do think by increasing that number of samples that we studied, we could confirm uh, most, if not all, of the uh, EQTLs. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. All right, well, um, thank you again so much, uh, both Drs. Tommaso Dragani and Harita Barishlingham, for your time today and your, this important research and explaining it all to us. Uh, we would like to also thank LabRoots and our sponsor, Thermo Fisher Scientific, for underwriting today's educational content. Before we go, I'd like to also thank you, the audience, for joining us today and for your interesting questions. Uh, we didn't get time to get to all of them today, so for those of you who submitted questions that we didn't get to, or also for the on-demand portion of this webinar, we will be addressing those um, with the speakers via the contact information that you provided at your time of registration. So uh, this webcast can also be viewed on demand and LabRoots will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We encourage you to share that information and that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. So until the next time, goodbye everybody and thank you for joining us. Have a great day. Goodbye. Thank you.